It's Hans device. <laughs> this this happened. This came into. Uh, uh, usage after Dale Earnhardt yeah. Sr.'s accident, right? Which looked fairly innocuous. It didn't look when he hit the wall that it was that severe, and yet it was a snapping of his, of his head. Yeah, one of the most consistent uh, comments after that wreck was we had seen many wrecks in NASCAR that were way worse than yeah. his. Yeah. And so for him to, to suffer the way he did and die, it was just shocking. It was absolutely shocking to any race fans, but especially people that really like Dale Earnhardt. But the thing is, his his head came forward yeah. and smashed, and he actually hit the steering wheel. Uh -huh. So it was really bad. It was a bad deal. So, I mean, safety, more safety is is better to no, keep. It's astonishing watching some of the wrecks in uh, NASCAR and the guys walk away from them. Mm -hmm. And I, I I wonder sometimes if it gives some of the uh, would be racers out there some. Uh, license in their view to get out there and, and drive wild because they're going to walk away too, but they're not. I mean, I've seen these cars being built in the Woods Brothers uh, facility in uh, in North Carolina, and I mean, th you're surrounded basically by a cage, right? Mm -hmm. Why don't we take a look at a few pictures here, just uh, for uh, interest's sake? This is your car. Uh, this is is this your most recent car? That's the car I ran in 2011. That's mm -hmm. Sunset Speedway up uh, south of Barrie. And you, you won the race there, yeah, obviously. we won the qualifying heat. We ended up qualifying on the pole. This is our picture of our brand new car this year. Uh, Quaker State asked me if I would uh, paint the car gold and green, and I was going to anyway. I mean, that was my next combination, but I think we're going to keep that one for at least two years, maybe more. There's a picture of my crew chief, Bob, on the left, and my mm. grandson on the right, ah. Garrick, my daughter's boy. And uh, he's going to be racing this year, too. Really? He starts his year. He's been racing go-karts for four years. And he'll start this year in a mini stock. No kidding. And it's I can't wait till I can race with him in the late model. And uh, my goal, one of my goals, is to race with my grandson and my son in the same series. <laughs> wow. What about your granddaughter? Is she interested in racing? Yes, she's actually racing go karts, and uh, she'll go into her fourth year in go kart racing, and then we'll see if she uh, wants to move into stock car racing for 2013. I think she does. Uh, Pennzoil sponsors my granddaughter and my son. And Quaker State sponsors me and sponsors my grandson. One of the most remarkable characteristics of uh, stock car racing is the, uh, I think, pronounced commitment to faith. I mean, you watch these big NASCAR races, and they always start out with a word of prayer. And you see, uh, you see the, um, the, the drivers being interviewed, and it seems like eight times out of ten, they're talking about the Lord and their commitment to Jesus. Um, is it because of the danger of racing, or is it just because of the subculture of NASCAR? No, I think it's because of the culture and where they're from. I think uh, we're talking the Bible Belt. We're also talking about people that are not ashamed of Jesus Christ. Uh, motor racing outreach, MRO, is a big part of NASCAR. They have uh, chapel services before every race. They interview drivers, and uh, you know they pray, and they pray in Jesus' name. I was absolutely blown away in the first time I seen Fox allow a prayer before a race to go on national TV. Usually they'll cut out the prayer and they'll come back and they'll say, okay, we're going to say, driver, start your engines. You might hear the national anthem on every sport and you may he hear, start your engines, but never do you hear a prayer. And for Fox to allow that and for NASCAR to have it, I think it's just fantastic. And, and what about you and your personal relationship with the Lord? Uh, have you always uh, been a, a follower of Jesus or has that been a more recent development? Well, when I first met you 20 years yeah. ago, that's I had just become a Christian. Then right. it was my second year. And my first 20 years racing, I raced without the Lord. And my last 23 years racing, I've been racing as a born-again Christian and a follower of Jesus Christ. And what difference has Jesus made in your life, uh, Gary? Oh, it's unbelievable. When I raced before, everything was just... It, my, my race car was my God. There's no doubt. I mean, my race car was my God. and. And every time the car let me down, I was devastated. And, and my last year racing, ironically, as a, as a non-believer, I won the race, but I was disqualified after the race was over. And God was really showing me then that I had put so much emphasis on my race car, that that was my God, that that was going to let me down, and it did. I lost that checkered flag. I lost that victory. Within three months or four months of that, I turned my life over to Jesus Christ. And I got a victory then that would last forever. <laughs> uh, tell me about your uh, your family. You mentioned um, uh, is a son and a daughter. Yes. 
Just tell me about them. Well, first of all, my wife is watching with oh. her three pets, and I got to mention her first. Oh, she, and, and her name is no, uh, Noni? Noni. 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 Yes, okay. thank you. And yeah. uh, we've been married 42 years, and uh, we went together two years before we got married. And so that means, and I just want to let guys know that want to start racing, make sure that you have your racing set up before you get married. <laughs> because once you do that, you're sort of grandfathered. You can stay in it. And, uh, but she's been really gracious, and uh, I love her, and she's allowed us to race me, race for 42 years. She asked me about 20 years ago, how long are you going to do this? And I said, well, I'm not, I still like doing it. So it's, no, nothing's changed. I still love racing, and I'm still able to do it physically. My son started racing when he was 16 years old. And uh, my daughter actually raced in 1992, mm -hmm. so she was uh, 21, mm -hmm. and uh, she raced for a year. And then my, my grandson is going to start racing next year. He'll be 13. But the rules have changed because they allow us to race younger now. So we're, we are a racing family for sure, and um, I'm, I'm really looking forward to this year. And I, I, I love racing with my son and my... 30 seconds, Gary. Do you, do you fear uh, the consequences of, a, of, a, of an accident? Do you, do you think about dying on the track? Never. I never think about dying, and, yeah. and I want to make this clear. Yeah. One thing I don't want to do is die in my sport. I don't think that's... I, I, I've heard people say, well, that he died doing what he loves doing. Mm -hmm. I love doing what I'm doing, but I'm doing it because I want to be a light to the people around me. So when I race with people, I want them to see Jesus. Mm -hmm. So I don't want to die doing what I'm doing. I want to, if I'm going to die anywhere, to be able to tell people about Jesus Christ before I die. In fact, the most dangerous place is a bed, right? Because most people die in a bed, so... <laughs> There you go. Gary Yellett, thanks so much for coming our way. Thank you. It's great to talk to a Canadian racing legend. It really is. And we'll be back with more right after this, friends.